Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva and most recently using Photopea as well so that you can put your designs on all sorts of different products, t-shirts, mugs, you name it, and sell it on platforms such as Amazon Merch On Demand, Etsy, Redbubble, and more. So if this is something that you're interested in learning about, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create different ugly Christmas sweater type designs. So this is one of the designs that I'm gonna show you today along with a lot of different variations and how you can make your own and play with it and you know find the right font and the right graphics and all of that. So if this is something that you're interested in learning about, especially around this Christmas season, go ahead and stick around. Okay. So in today's video, we're going to be going and doing a little bit of a Christmas design as we are well into quarter four. I hope you guys already have a lot of Christmas stuff up and I hope you guys are making some good sales. Um, I know Cyber Monday was yesterday as, a, as I'm recording this and so I hope you guys had a, a great sale on Cyber Monday. Um, we are hitting the wire in terms of Christmas designs, so I am going to show you one more Christmas type design and then we'll move on to to some things that we can start working on in January and February. But for now, the last Christmas one that I really wanted to show you was the ugly sweater niche. So I know you've seen a lot of those ugly sweater type designs. You can do those on t-shirts, you can do those on sweatshirts. They don't just have to be sweaters. And there's some easy ways that you can make that using Canva. So as usual, I've got my blank background. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. I will still be designing for black as that is the most popular sold uh, t-shirt color. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and select my background color here. I'm gonna click my background, come to the top left-hand corner where it says background color, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select black. And so this is what we're gonna be starting with. And so to make a really cool Christmas sweater, ugly Christmas sweater, obviously you need the ugly Christmas sweater kind of uh, top and bottom design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna search our elements. So on the left-hand corner of the page, we're gonna go up to the tab that says elements and we can click on that. Right now I've got my recently used up and I've already got some here, but if I was to go ahead and just do a search, I can search for anything I want up here. I'm gonna go ahead and put like Christmas pattern. And there's a lot of different ways we can search for these. Oops, spelled it wrong. And so some of them you'll get will be sort of the all over print patterns. You will get some right here that are sort of the ugly Christmas style design patterns. So all of these could work really well and you can use any of them that you like. So, you know, be creative, do a lot of different versions. Um, here's another one right here. And so we can pick just about anything that we want. So let's just say I wanted to pick this one. Okay, now this one's kind of cool. If I bring it to the top and the bottom, I can come across so that you can see it real well. And so this is what it looks like. Now you might think, okay, I don't want this big line coming through the middle of my page. Well, no worries. All of these designs can be cropped. And so you can use any part of these as you, as you would like for like a topper or a bottom. So let's say that I want, you know, sort of the poinsettias on the top and I want sort of the Christmas trees on the bottom, but I don't want this whole middle section. Well, that is not a problem. I can go ahead and take this and double click it. Once I double click it, I can now crop it. So if I come to the corner where you see the little white corner piece, I can click on that and then just drag this whole thing up. And if I was to drag this whole thing up, I can now get rid of the entire bottom part. And now I just have this top part here. And so that's pretty easy to do. And then what I can do is I can get this design up again pull it all the way across the page. Again, this time I'm gonna line the bottom of it up the way I want it. And so I'll just drag it until the bottom fills the entire page. And then I'm just gonna repeat the process. I can double click, come to the top corner here, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and drag down. And I can drag down as far as I want. And so now I've got the bottom of a sweater, I've got the top of the sweater, I've got a nice empty space. If you wanted, for example, to keep these dots going. Again, that wouldn't be a hard thing to do. We could just save the dot person portion, sorry, and just uh, fill it in with dots. So let's say I did want the dots. Let's grab this design one more time. I'm gonna, oops, gonna make it fill the page again so that it's the same size. 
Doesn't matter where I line it up because I'm gonna crop most of it out. So for this one, I just wanna save just this little dot part. So let's say I crop off just the top part and get some dots and I crop off just this bottom part until I get some dots. And now I've got some dots. And so now I can line this part up wherever it would look best lined up. So let's say there. Once I have it the way I want it, I can just duplicate it. So let's say I want to take this entire line. I can click. And then if I put Control D on my keyboard, it will duplicate it. And now that I have it duplicated, I can just bring it down again wherever I want. Now we are getting a little bit of a weird pattern here, but that could be cool. And then I can just go ahead and keep doing that. So if I hit Control D, oops, click on it, hit Control D, I can do it again and just keep bringing it down just like that until I filled the whole page. I can do it one more time, Control D, bring it down. And again, if I'm overlapping like I am here, no worries, I can crop that out by double clicking, coming up, dragging, and now I've cropped that out. And so that would be one way that I could get these dots all across the back of the page if I wanted to. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can go with the ugly Christmas sweaters. You can be as creative as you want. You can also make the top and the bottom fill a lot more of the page. So this is a relatively narrow top and bottom, but there are a lot of really cool ones where it would be a lot wider. So let's say we were to continue to search. I'm sure we'd get some really cool ones here. Here's some good wide ones that you could do. So if I wanted, Something like that is really wide and I could make that go across by just copying and pasting and bringing that one across. That might be really cool. And so again, you'll just have to play with these because there's so many different variations and so many really cool ways that you could go with this. Lots of different colors that you could use. And so be as creative as you want, but if you're gonna get these up for Christmas, go ahead and do this as you know quick as possible. Um, you wanna get these up, you know, pretty much right away. So let's say, I kinda like kind of like the way this Christmas tree looks. Let's say I wanted to take this. I'm just gonna make this even more detailed. I'm gonna put my trees up here. So now I'm gonna put some trees right along the edge there. So something like that looks pretty cool. Or maybe I wanna put that at the bottom. I've already got trees at the bottom, but I mean, I could do this however I wanted and I could do a little copy paste just like that. Again, I'm just, clicking it, hitting Control D, and it's duplicating it, and then I just move my duplicated version over. And so I could do something like that. And so you could see how you could easily create your own pattern, layer patterns on top of patterns. I could add snowflakes in. I could do this kind of however I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna come up to the top here where there was just some other ones that looked kind of cool. There were some solid looking ones too. So this one was a little bit more solid. So let's say down here, I wanted to add, uh, well, let's say I did wanna add sort of the red dots in here. Maybe I wanna flip this over. So to flip it over, I could click here and rotate the whole thing. I could also come up here to where it says flip and I could have clicked that and clicked flip vertical. Either way, I would have flipped it. I could take this whole thing now if I wanted to. And again, I could make this fill the page just like that. I can cut off any part I don't want by double clicking, getting the corner and pulling all the way down. And so let's say I just wanted that. And so now you can see how I'm getting a lot of really cool, just different stripes. I could do an entirely just different striped one all the way up the top and the bottom, and that might look cool just by itself. So, you know, you don't have to even have words. You could just have pictures. Um, so many different ways you could do this. Also, instead of putting Christmas pattern, if I wanted to come up to the top, and of course I spelled Christmas wrong, huh? Christmas, I could put Christmas sweater, and that's one I've done before. And so I'll get some Christmas sweaters, but if I scroll down, I'm also gonna get some cool patterns here that I could use, again, so some of the Christmas sweater patterns. So you could also search however you like. Ooh, I like this one here with the reindeers. Let's say I wanna take this reindeer one, Maybe I wanna fill in this last part here with the reindeers, because I think the reindeers look pretty cool. Double click, let's say I wanna bring this down until it lines up somewhere in here. 
How's that look? That's pretty cool, except I do want this to be a little redder. See, it doesn't really go with the rest of the colors. I can always edit image too. So let's say I click just this one and I come up to the top where it says edit image. If I click this, I can play with the saturation, the saturation. And so I can make it a little bit more saturated if I wanted a little bit of a deeper red. And so that's one way I could go with it. And so that obviously is going to change the way it looks a little bit, and that's kind of cool. Let's say I still wanted it to be a little darker. I could take the whole thing again, edit image, and I could play with the brightness. Let's say I brought this brightness down. That's going to make it a little bit darker that way. I am losing a little bit of my contrast. So again, I could bring that contrast up. And so this is how you can play with some of those images to get them sort of the way you want them. And so something like that. I could also throw some filters on here too, just to see if I could play with the color a little bit more that way. So let's say I took the same thing. I come to edit image. Now, typically when I throw on a filter, I'm gonna lose all of my adjust, um, sort of my adjustments. So just know that ahead of time. But let's say I wanted to come down and a really easy filter that you could throw on would be the photogenic. And so if I go see all, this is gonna give me some different tones. So if I wanted more of that kind of deeper red, I could go with, let's say this mist tone here. Um, and again, I've lost my contrast and everything. So I'd have to do that over again, but it's gonna give me just different tones that I could use. So if I wanted something that's maybe a little bit, you know, deeper, I could do any of these sort of, um, filters on it. And so let's just say I wanted to go with this filter. It's giving it a little bit of a pinkish look though. Um, maybe I'll go back to the mist filter. Go back to my mist. I'll hit apply. So now I've got the mist filter on. And then once that's all done, then I can go up. Oops and play with my saturation again. And so you gotta know how you can manipulate all of these images and, and really try to make some of these designs your own. But Christmas sweaters are, again, just really easy to do. So let's say I wanted to do that again. I'm gonna saturate it so it's nice and deep. I'm gonna bring it down so it's a little deeper, bring up the contrast so it's a little bit more contrasty, really make the deer pop, something like that. And so those are just ways that I can sort of tweak and play with the colors of everything. And I could go through and do it as many times as I wanted to. Um, if you'll notice here on my trees, you might find a little gap in between where maybe I didn't line them up perfectly. If you really need to see up close, you can come down here on the bottom of the page. And what you do is you scroll to the right and I can zoom in on anything. And so let's say I zoom way in, I scroll up and I see, oh my gosh, I got a little bit of a gap here. What you can do to make very fine adjustments would be to click on your graphic and use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So now if I was to use the arrow key to the left, I can move this one pixel at a time to the left until I close that gap perfectly. Now I've got another gap over here and I can do the same thing until I close this gap perfectly. And so this is how I can make tiny little micro adjustments to make sure everything looks real nice. And then I can zoom back out and there you go. And so that's kind of just a really <laughs> weird, funny looking Christmas design that you could make. And so that is sort of one example. I did also want to show you how you could get some good text on here too. So let's say I'm just going to do one more page here. I'm going to click add page at the bottom. That way I don't lose my top design, but I can still come down here. So now let's say I want to make more of my standard ugly sweater look. So I've got, here we go. I'm just going to put a top and a bottom on here. Nice big top, nice big bottom. And I can do it any way I want. Let's say I want to do the same top and bottom. Again, I can hit Control D. Now I've got another one. Let's say that I want them to be kind of opposite each other. I can take this top, or sorry, this bottom one, come to flip, flip vertically. So now I've got more of a mirrored image and I could bring this down here. And then if I wanted to put some text in the middle, let's say I want to put a text box. And let's say for this one, I'm gonna make it funny. I'm gonna put festive AF. And if you don't know what that means, you can look it up. AF is very popular to add on to certain sayings. Um, and so you'll see that on, on lots of different designs. So I've got my festive AF. Mm -hmm. 
And so now let's say I want a font that's gonna look like it goes, that's gonna look like it's part of the sweater. What I find works really well um, for some of the kind of stitching look is to do um, a pixelated text. So I can take this and come up to where my fonts are and I can go ahead and type in pixelated, which I've already done, but I'll just show you again here if I put pix, oops, pixelated. Now it's gonna give me a list of different pixelated um, fonts and I can go through here and try to find one that I think looks good. So that one kind of looks like um, a little bit of a stitched design, maybe not that one, there's some dot ones. And so you can kind of see which one might look good and sort of give you whatever stitching type design you want. That one's cool, it's just got the little boxes. That one's kind of cool. I kind of like this one, it gives me just the little squares. And so I can blow this up. And that's gonna give me a little bit of a, a stitched look. And again, there's a lot of different pixelated type fonts that you can go through to sort of figure out which one looks best with your um, specific design. And depending on what kind of border you put, some of these might fit better than others. Um, but I get a lot of those little boxed looks that looks pretty cool. That one's just a lot of dots. And I think that's close to what I had. So that one. And I can just play with all of them if I want until I find the one that I say, ooh, that jumps out and that maybe looks the best, Arcade Gamer. So this might have been the one that I had it on before, something like this, similar. And then I've got my festive AF. I can blow that up, make it nice and big. I can center it in the page, whatever I want. And then I can change the color of the font to match the sweater, or I can change the color of the sweater to match the font or any combination. So let's say I wanted to make that a nice deep dark red. I could do that if I wanted it to be green. I kind of like the white because it makes it pop. So maybe we take this and we change the color. Maybe I want this to be a little brighter because it's really getting lost in the background. I can pick you know, any color that I want. And so some of these look kind of cool. Let's say I wanted to make it green and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the bottom green. I could also do a little bit of a layered effect here if I wanted to take this top one, hit Control D, this is kind of a cool effect, and now take the top layer and maybe make it red. You can see now I've got a little bit of a green border, okay? So I can do that on both too, so I think that kind of looks cool. I take it, Control D, I'm gonna do it again and get sort of that red. I can do the same thing with the font if I want to too. Again, Control D, and let's say I still want that top layer to be white. Maybe I want that bottom layer to be that deep dark red. So I can pick that deep dark red. Which red was it? That one. And I can send this one to back. Now I've got the white on top of the red that way, and that kind of looks cool. Or if I wanted it to be the green, I could do it that way. So there's a lot of different ways that we can, you know, have fun and play with some of these. I could still put some dots in here. So again, some of the dots that I did up at the top, I could do the same type of um, idea here with the dots. And so really, I just wanted to show you guys all the different techniques that you can use and how you can go ahead and play with things and change them up and make them you know, however, however you like. Oops, just do this off. So, again, just different ways to play with it. Let's say I kind of like this better than this. Again, I can always crop these. So let's say I just wanted to keep the tree, but lose this. I can crop, oops, I can crop both of them. Oh, that's giving me trouble. Crop both of them up to there. And now maybe I bring this one here, something like that. I mean, I can totally play with this and that's kind of cool. I could even kind of layer them like this. Festive of the F. Whoops. Festive AF and let's say Control D. I could sandwich them. And so these are just all of the different variations, ways that you can play with things to make them just, you know, 
really cool make them your own however you want again if you ever make any mistakes and you want to be able to go back maybe I still want this back here no problem I can hit the back button and if I hit the back button it's just going to take me back one step at a time until I'm back to where I want it to be and so I can do that as many times as I want to you can see until I'm right back to here and so we can go through different versions as well let's say I did like that Oops, stacked version. Again, I could totally do that and I can make my little micro adjustments to make them fit really nice. Um, and I could even still, if I wanted to, let's say I like the white in the middle. I'm gonna get rid of the red one. I'm gonna put the white one in the middle here. Oop. Control D. Maybe I want top and bottom to be green. Again, I can play with it however I want, maybe green. And so this is kind of the process that I go through. I play with it a lot until I kind of find what I think looks best. And if there's several versions and I like all of them, if I'm on a platform where I have a lot of options to put up different versions, I will put up every version. I will put up versions in every color, every you know little variation that I make. It could be a new design that you put up to see you know kind of what sells best. This is assuming that you have lots of um, slots. So I mean, if you're on Amazon Merch on Demand and you don't have a lot of slots, you're gonna have to just sort of pick what you think looks the best. If you have a lot of slots open or if you're using something like Redbubble where you can literally put up as many as you want, go ahead and put up every version that you have. If you're using something like Etsy, you might not wanna to do too many just because Etsy, you do have to pay per listing. So if you have to pay a listing fee, then again, you might wanna narrow it down to just a few, but you can always put up lots of different, you know, variations of everything. Um, like I said, I do, I do like to play with it and just sort of see what looks the best. I kind of like the white there. But then I'm like, ooh, I kind of would like some red in this. It's got some cool greens here, but maybe I wish that background color was red. I can always take any of these, put send to back and bring the other color forward. I can change this now to red. And this is how quickly and easily I could play with these and just sort of play around. So you should be able to go through your designs and make alterations and changes like this and make them pretty quick. And so let's just say I'm gonna stick with this one and this is the one I wanna put up. It says festive AF and I think it looks pretty good. I might wanna zoom in on the text really quick to make sure it's spaced evenly and right now it's not quite spaced evenly. Again, I can always whoop, click on these, and use my little arrow keys to bring it up or down just a little bit. And if I'm having trouble reaching one that's in the back, like let's say this white one, I can't quite grab it because it's behind. Again, no problem. I can take any of these, put sense to back, and now I should be able to grab that one. And so you can always move your layers around too to make it easier for you to grab things. And so once I feel like these are spaced pretty well, and that looks nice, there we go. So that is the sweater that I would go with, Festive AF. You could put it on a little t-shirt. It's kind of a sarcastic version. And so I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna title this oops, uh, Festive AF sweater. And then I can just download it. So now when I come up to the top where it says share, I can click on share. I'm gonna come down to where it says download. For all of these um, print-on-demand products, we're gonna need a transparent background because you do not want that big you know, black box there. So go ahead and click your transparent backgrounds. And then whenever I have more than one page, I'm gonna have to pick which page I want. So for this one, I want page two. So I can just select page two. And so that's the one that I'm gonna download. And then I just hit download. And if I was gonna make more versions of this, I might just keep adding pages. Um, that way I could reuse um, any of the, the ones above that I want and sort of keep my, my different versions all on one, um, 
one open project. So that makes it a little bit easier than opening a new page every single time I want to make a variation. Um, it would also be easy now if I uploaded it and I didn't like the way it looked on a certain color, I could always come back and edit it or make any alterations. Right now it looks good on black, which is kind of what I would go for, but let's say somebody wanted it on a green shirt, all of a sudden I might lose my festive AF, or if they wanted it on a white shirt, all of a sudden I lose the middle. So maybe I look at these and I think, hmm, maybe I should put some layering on some of the words so that I don't lose them. Um, what that would mean um, would be like how I layered up here, I could layer the text as well, just so that if I put it on different color shirts, I'd be able to see it. Or you can always just design for one color. But let's say I'm gonna take this one here and I want this to be a back layer and maybe I want the back layer to be red. So let's take it, I'm gonna make it the same red color I have here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, Control D, bring a layer on top. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make the top layer white. And so now I've got a little bit of a layering there. So now if I put it on a different color, like a white shirt at least, the text would still pop a little bit, right? So that, that's one of the cool techniques about layering or getting a, a shadow or a background to anything is to try to make it pop on different colors. Obviously it wouldn't pop too well because I lose the, the back color on this, on white, but you can play around with the different types of colors you might use. Maybe I want to put a lighter color, maybe even red on the green here so that it would pop if I wanted to put it on a green shirt. You know, lots of different ways I could, again, play with it to make sure that I got everything popping the way I want. Um, so that was just an example of how you can play with this. If you have any questions about this technique, go ahead, drop them in the comment section below. Again, if there's any videos or topics that you want me to cover, you can always put those in the um, comment section below as well. I do try to get back to them and I do try to accommodate any kind of requests for videos. Sometimes it takes a little while to get to them because I do have a list of videos that I wanna get through. So it may be several weeks um, before I get to your video, um, but I will try. Um, again, I hope you guys are doing well with your quarter four sales. Um, you know, happy holidays. Don't just do Christmas. Remember, there are other holidays. And um, again, most of my sales aren't Christmas related. Most of my sales are things that people are gifting to other people for Christmas, but they're not Christmas themed shirts. They're interest themed shirts. So remember, this is the time of year that you wanna get all sorts of different designs up because people are buying gifts for other people, not just Christmas shirts to wear for the holidays. So with that said, um, that's the end of this video. I hope, I hope this was useful for you guys and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.